How's everybody doing today? So it's been a minute since we've been in here and messed with the CL. A lot of life changes going on over in my neck of the woods, so it's kind of been put on hold. Um, back in March, we had an engine failure, and I'm finally getting to the point where I've got the engine out, got the heads off, got a new motor right there, actually not new, very old, and then the head over there. So I'm going to show you what we found. So we come over here, and all the exhaust valves hit every single piston. Come around here to this side. You got that one there. There. And then down in there. None of the pistons cracked, but it did raise it a little bit. The idea here is I'm, I'm having one engine completely refreshed, completely assembled, going to the AEM tuner. Um, in such a way that I can't run, you know, the manual setup anymore because of the way these are you have to have like the manual uh, Version of the engine will have a different um, Like sensor on the cam and then a different crank trigger over here or something like that The automatic versions are different than the manual So because the AEM tuner, I'm gonna have to swap everything over to the automatic version now, which is frustrating I wish I knew that in the beginning. I would have never took an automatic car put a manual wiring harness in it. I would have just bought the AEM tuner off the get-go. So I'm gonna go backwards now. Um, I only have like six weeks to the race and there's so much to do. Work is wide open. Life and COVID kind of got in the way of everything. So what I'm trying to do now, I'm trying to take this short block because everything is so fresh on it. I'm just gonna try to put new different heads on it. And I'm hoping that that will be able to last you know a race it's not going to be as good as the fresh built engine but i just don't see that coming together taking it to the guy who's gonna put the computer in the car and do the wiring harness put it on the dyno and do all that i don't see all that happening in six weeks so i've got to prep something to where if i can just take the heads off of this motor put it on that motor and then drop it right back in the car i'm ready to go racing if I do it the other way, I've got like 15 small projects I gotta do in order to get the car put back together. So the idea here is to take these two heads off. This engine had 314,000 miles on it, which is insane, but it still ran. So this engine right here, 314,000, originally came out of that car. That was a silver automatic, and I bought a totaled black CL manual and I swapped everything over from the black car. And it got put in here. So I saved the engine that originally came out of this car, and there it is. But it was so high mileage, I never wanted to run it because the engine that was in the black car was the manual, and it's, this is it right here. So this is the whole setup. This was the transmission that came out of it, and that was the engine that came out of it. And I put a non-competent driver in there, and he just could not find fifth gear to save his life. <clears throat> I think he lasted 15 minutes on track before that happened. So hindsight's 2020. Fifth gear is hard to find on uh, a lot of these cars, apparently, from what I'm finding out. There's really no <clears throat> way of fixing it. But so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead try to get the uh, the engine hoist around through my disaster of a garage. Probably clean it up for a minute. Get that engine picked up put back on the stand, take the heads off, and try to see if what I want to do is going to be feasible. So that's the direction we're going now. But yeah, if you wanted to look at the heads, here they are getting rained on. To me, they're, they're useless at this point. Still good, but it's weird because if you look down in there, you can see that little silver spot. That's wild. I don't even know what happened there. It's like the valve bent, but then it got sucked back and bent back. I don't know. There's a mark there, and there, one there, one there, and one there. I don't really know what that was. But that thing has seen some abuse. All right, so we got the cherry picker here. It's kind of raining, so I got it covered up right now, but I'm about to hook the chain through it and get her inside. Okay. 
Okay, it's on the engine stand now. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick wash because there's so much grease on this thing. Just giving it a good old purple power bath. Because all we really need is the heads. I'm taking mine, the, uh, the rotating assembly, the short block isn't really going to get used. I'm just taking it apart for the heads. Okay, so we've got this head taken apart as far as the rocker assembly is concerned. This had uh, 314,000 miles on it. <clears throat> so, or actually, no, it didn't. This came out of the racing engine. So this had 200,000 miles on it. Got the rocker assembly off of it. The reason why is if you come over here and you try to spin this one, it doesn't spin. Come over here and spin this one, look. It got taken off. So we took the rocker assembly off of this one when the motor blew up because we took the valve cover off because I heard the, the clicking sound. And what I found was that one of the rollers on the uh, exhaust rocker, or I guess it's the intake rocker, had broken. So we were, or actually it was the exhaust rocker, it was this one. One of these on the other head. So this is the only good assembly I have left. So we're gonna clean it up and we're gonna put it on this one here. So now I gotta start taking this part. All right, so got the head off. This is what it looks like. There's the old head gasket. That's what underneath looks like. All these look pretty pretty clean. Nothing sticks out to me just yet. Come over here. This had 314,000 miles on it. And there's no scarring on that wall. None there. Now granted, I did pressure wash it, so there's a little bit of residual water there. But... All those cylinders look beautiful. There's a little bit of buildup inside the cooling jacket. It's probably okay. Just because they probably added water and different style antifreeze throughout its life. See some trash down in there. That would cause a hot spot. Cool. Well, this head looks good. We're going to go ahead and try to get it pieced together before we take this one off. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this with a brake cleaner and get it all cleaned up before we go ahead and start assembling that. But everything so far on there looks pretty good. All right, so I got the head all cleaned up. I'm gonna show you. So we got it all cleaned up. Everything rotates nice and good. We come over here and start looking at these lobes and so you can see the top of the lobes on that one. That looks good. Come over to the top of the lobes. Look. See that? The abuse right there. Come over here to this one. Those got abused. Come over here to this one. Those got abused. So this whole camshaft is shot. So now I'm going to have to take the damn thing apart and see, see what we can do.
Okay. That's terrible. Okay, so here's what I figured out. So this right here would be your right head. This is your left head. This is off of a different engine than this. And these rockers here are going to go on to here. But since this had 314,000 miles on it, what I assume is they neglected to ever do a valve job on it. Because the exhaust rockers, I believe, run on those. So I'm going to say these two intake rockers here saw a whole lot of wear because they never adjusted the valve. So maybe they were getting valve slapped. I just don't understand it. I don't know. Come over here. Those get the same thing. So what I have to do, I was hoping I could just pop the cam out of that one, but I can't because they're not the same. So now I have to, instead of just taking this head off and mounting it onto that block, I gotta fully disassemble this just to take the camshaft out of it and then put it in that one and put it all back together. It's a cluster, but we shall try. Okay, come over here and look at this head. Everything looks pretty hunky-dory inside of there. We'll flip it over. See what the inside looks like. Got a little bit of build up inside the cooling jacket there. These valves don't look as clean as the others. These have carbon build up on them. But that makes sense because this would be the EGR side. So you're going to get more exhaust gases coming through there. So okay easy enough i think she's usable now i got to take it apart and take all these runners off and we're going to inspect the camshaft all right so i got the head off now this right here came off of an automatic i believe no all right so this is what i just took off they came out of there yeah this came out of an automatic and this one came out of a true manual. Now, same style gear, same style gear. Come over here and you look at these VTEC springs. And this is what you get out of that head. And you come over here and you take these out. Look at that. I really don't understand. They're different. They're both 2003s. They're both Type S's. J32A2s. This came out of an automatic, and that came out of a manual. I'm confused. Anybody in the comment section, drop a comment if you understand. I might have to ask some questions. But, back to the head. So we come over here to the cam. We look at the lobes. Those look good. Those look okay. There's a, a very small score right there. You can kind of tell. I'm going to come over here. We're going to look at these. Those exhausts look okay. Look at these. Look okay. But we come over here to these. And we roll up. Those look alright on the intake. But on the exhaust. We got scoring on that one. Unfortunate. See that? I don't like that. That will not last an endurance race. That will kill a roller. So, even though the heads are good, the cams are not. Lucky for me, I have got some uh, J35A8 cams. They are not here, but they are at my other shop. I'm going to get them, and I'm going to piece together a head with some RL cams and use that as a backup motor. Didn't really know what I was going to do with them. Now I know what I'm going to do with them. So, stay tuned for that. Once I get those heads built and everything ready, then we'll throw it on that engine and we'll go from there. But for right now, that's kind of all I've got. All I can do because I can't really do anything else because both camshafts are shot. And I have to disassemble all, all, all four heads to make two good heads. So it's either a whole lot of work to do that or I just say to hell with it and drop the RL cams in it. And just go through the whole thing so a lot of work to do but unfortunately that's the direction we're going to have to go if we're going to stay competitive and stay reliable so thank y'all for watching until next time have a good one